today's lesson, we'll learn about the numbering system for our left hand, how to find the optimal curvature for our fingers, and we'll do a three note exercise that will allow us to explore finger pressure. Our left hand follows a numbering system where our index finger is one, our middle finger is two, our ring finger is three, and our pinky is four. And the thumb I left out because it doesn't follow a numbering system. It's actually labeled T and it's used in some chord playing and some advanced classical playing, but more on that later. Now that we've talked about the left hand numbering system, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the physical setup. So a common error for many guitarists is not having enough curvature in their left hand fingers. So what I'd like to invite you to do is make a fist with your left hand, Bring your thumb up to the side of your first finger, and now hover it over the first three frets. Loosen the fist only enough so that your thumb goes behind the neck. If you look from my point of view, you'll see that the thumb is between the first and second fingers. Let's get to some playing now. So for this example, I'd like you to take your right hand thumb, or P, and place it on the one, two, three, four string, going from the thinnest to the thickest. Now, I'd like you to put your index finger on the second string in rest stroke position. And it's important to realize that our technique functions in an ecosystem. So make sure you really understand your sitting position and your right hand setup. But with that in mind, we're going to take our left hand fist, loosen up, and we're going to put our third finger on the third fret on the second string. So what I want to do right now is go right before the fret or right before the piece of metal and apply some pressure with my finger. And many of us will be successful right out the gate with that. Now, a common mistake here is to be too far to the left, so I can keep that same amount of pressure and get a buzz note. So again, always make sure you're right before the fret. So this was an unintentional buzz because of bad placement. Now we're gonna create some intentional thuds and buzzes. So what I'd like to invite you to do now is let your third finger kind of feel like a feather above the string and just create a thud. Now we're going to add just a little bit more pressure and we're intentionally hearing that buzz, that cracked note. And now we're going to add just a pinch more pressure and now we get a beautiful clean note that we don't have to work hard for. I'm not squeezing my thumb. I've kind of optimized everything. So what we're gonna do next is apply that same procedure to the second finger. Start off with the thud. We're just gonna lightly graze. Add a little bit more. You want it to crack. Now just a little bit more. Same thing with our first finger. Start with the thud. Add a little bit more, and a little bit more still. Now we're going to put these all together and play them consecutively. So notice, as I do this, as I set up my third finger, my second finger and first finger aren't off pointing somewhere else. They're staying very, very close, and in fact, they're touching the string for me right now. So with that in mind, let's play all those notes consecutively. So it's going to be three, two, one, two, three. Again, three, pick up, two, one, two, three. And we'll do one more. Three, two, one, That is your left hand exercise for the day. See you later. Hi, Federico here. And today we're going to learn a three string chromatic exercise that we can use for different purposes. First, we can use it as a warm up to get our fingers moving before our practice session. But we could also use it to work on our speed or to fine tune our left and right hand coordination while practicing different right hand fingerings. When we talk about the chromatic scale, we're talking about a scale that moves by half step 
or one fret at a time and uses all 12 pitches. For today's exercise, we're skipping a few notes so that it's easier on the fretboard and we keep the same fingering. Some of you might be visual learners um, and can follow what I'm doing here by watching the video, but I'm also attaching files so you can follow along, you can see the notation and the tab as well. So here's the basic exercise. We start on the G string on the first fret with the first finger. And now I plug that string, add the second finger on the second fret, add the third finger on the third fret, and finally add the pinky on the fourth one. So we're doing one, two, three, and four. Keeping in mind that we're placing our fingers right behind the fret to avoid any fret buses, curving our fingers, right? Avoid playing with the finger pads, but rather curve the fingers. So again, we go one, two, three, four. Go to the second string, the B string, and repeat the same motion. One, two, three, four. E string, one, two, three, four. That's the first half of the exercise. One more time. One. Next one. Once I reach G sharp, the fourth fret on the E string, I go backwards. Four, three, two, one. Something that we need to mention is that when we are ascending, going up in the scale, one, two, three, four, we're going to keep the fingers on the fretboard. See, when I place my second finger, I'm keeping the first one. When I place the third finger, I'm keeping both the first and second fingers on the fretboard. When I place my pinky, all other three fingers are on the fretboard. So one, two, three, four. Now come back. Notice how when I'm coming back, I'm lifting the fingers so we can hear the new notes. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. One of the reasons why I like this exercise is because we're not using any open strings. So if some of you uh, cannot stretch right away and reach all the frets, one, two, three, four, because you're not able to stretch this way yet, what you could do is start the same exercise on a different position. Let's say I do, I'm now on the seventh. So G string, but I'm on the seventh fret. And I go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then I come back. If you can do it, then see if you can do it one fret towards the head of the guitar and then you keep working your way all the way up until you reach the first one. Something that we haven't mentioned yet is uh, the right hand. Right now, all I'm doing is some alternating index and middle fingers using rest stroke. But you can also do free stroke. Let's say we want to speed this up, but our left hand is not quite there yet. What we could do is we could play every note twice. Let me show you how I like to practice this exercise. And this is label under exercise number three, if you're following the PDF. I do the same combination, but once I reach G sharp, one, two, three, four, I slide my hand to the right, one fret, and now I come back. And now I, I slide one fret to the right. Right. 
Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy those little exercises. I'll see you next time. We've covered what the difference is between rest stroke and free stroke. Let's talk about another way to practice our free stroke. We're going to learn what we call arpeggios. Arpeggios are basically when you take a chord, but instead of playing it like that where all the notes are simultaneous, we're going to just roll the notes of the chord. So we can call that a broken chord or a rolled chord but the notes are staggered instead of being played simultaneous. We can roll the chord going up in pitch or going down in pitch. Now to make sure we have a good basis for playing arpeggios, let's review um, some of the principles of free stroke. So here's where I'm gonna place my hand to prepare for my free stroke. Remember that the difference between rest stroke and free stroke is that in free stroke, instead of resting your finger on the string next to the one that you just plucked, you're gonna kick the top part of your fingertip towards your palm. And you're gonna do this by relaxing this finger joint, bringing the string with you. And you can try practicing it on your open strings and then resetting your fingers on the strings. That's going to help you always start from the strings when you pluck free stroke. You don't want to come at it from the air, because if you do, you're just not going to get as good of a sound. You want to start always with your fingers on the strings. So this is the first position, which I like to call the staircase, because it looks like each finger is on the step of um, a sequence of stairs. So we're gonna just set our I finger on the G string, the M finger on the B string, and the A finger on the E string. And then you're gonna just keep your hand nice and relaxed. You're gonna soften this tip joint of your finger, the very top one. And then you're gonna pluck the string and then allow the fingertip to bring the finger in towards the palm. And then you're gonna do it in going from the index finger towards the ring finger. And then you can practice it going back down. So you can start really slow. And then add the thumb. So your thumb can sit on any bass string, but I'm doing mine on the A string. arpeggios in a circular motion. So every time one of my fingers leaves the string, it goes in a circular path to travel back to the string where it came from. So if you just think about the size of a quarter, that's about the size of the circle that you want to make as your finger travels back to the string where it started from. You can practice that individually on each string. And you can also just practice it in the air. You can just trace that shape of a circle about the size of a quarter and imagine that your fingers are going from the string, going along the path of a quarter and then back to where they started. So now we're gonna practice a basic open string arpeggio exercise. Let's set up by making our staircase. Here's my I, M and A fingers on the first three strings. And then my thumb is gonna sit on the low E string. I'm going to go in this order. P, I, M, A, M, I. Okay, got that? So remember to always try to replant your fingers back on the strings before you start plucking. We always want to start from the strings. It's going to result in a fuller, richer sound um, instead of just starting from the air. that now you can add a few more repetitions of the arpeggio in your fingers so we're going to try this one now P -I -M -A -M -I -A -M -I -A
faster tempo, it might sound like this. But if you're not ready to go that fast, don't sweat it. Just keep it at a nice basic tempo. And the most important thing is that you're replanting your fingers on the string every time you finish the pattern. I like to try to get my fingers back to the strings as soon as I can. So like that. And then replanting my thumb before I pluck it and then making sure my fingers are sitting on the string before I release. So if you keep practicing your arpeggios, you'll have a whole nother dimension in your playing that you'll be able to add to a lot of your music. In fact, I think the best thing about guitar is that it's polyphonic, that we can play more than one voice at the same time. And often that happens in guitar music where there's a melody voice being played with our ring finger or our M finger and then an arpeggio texture on the bottom of that to provide a layer of accompaniment, kind of like this. Welcome to lesson two on strumming. Last week we were looking at our beginning motions with our first down strum, focusing on our elbow as the main hinge point, making sure that's nice and has a free range of motion, keeping a nice straight wrist, a relaxed hand, and brushing across the strings with one solid quick sound for our down strum. So this week we're gonna meet our friend the up strum. If we're gonna be using our fingers to strum, the up strum is gonna be done with the tip of the thumb and more specifically, the left side of the tip of the thumb. So we're still focusing on the top half of the finger always, trying to avoid that very tender part just where the skin starts on the thumb. If we catch that on the upper string, it's a little bit thinner, it's gonna hurt a little bit more. So again, focusing on the top half of the thumb. And now we're gonna use the back of the nail. And don't worry if you don't have guitar nails, the back of whatever nail you do have there is what you're focusing on. We wanna avoid trying to shoot for the very center tip of the thumb that forces us to crank our wrist over and puts us in an awkward position for strumming. With our straight wrist position, we actually have our contact point with the strum is gonna be from the left side of the thumb. We're going for one smooth motion through the strings to get one solid clear sound of the strum, trying to avoid that arpeggiated sound, which is hearing individual strings. We wanna hear one up strum. So we use that hinge of the elbow, we pull up, using that left side of the thumb for our nice up strum. If we're using a pick, the positioning and the hand looks pretty much the same, except for now in between I and M, we are holding that pick nice and gently so that we can allow that pick to have a little bit of flex as it comes up through the strings. Regardless if we're using a pick or our fingers, we wanna make sure that that up strum originates from just below the high E string, brushes across the top, and then finishes just above. Again, that hand stays nice and relaxed, fingers are curled in in a natural relaxed position. When we were doing our down strums last week, we started counting with a nice, easy pulse of a count to four. One, two, three, four, and we put a down strum on each of those, and in between each one, in rhythm, we actually had a ghost up or a return of that strumming hand. One, return, two, ghost, three, ghost, four, ghost. And that allowed us to start building this clock, this metronome into our right arm that's gonna allow us to hold our rhythm and keep a beat steady when we play songs in the future. So now what we wanna do is put a count in between each of those beats, but instead of using numbers, we're actually gonna keep track of those with the word and. So now it's gonna count as one and, two and, three and, four and. Each of those ands are gonna be what we call our upbeat, and that's of course where we're gonna put our up strum. One and, two and. So we want that up strum on each and. Let's go ahead and just try four up strums on each of the ands 
And in order to do this, those, those counts, those beats, the one, two, three, and four, they still exist. We want to acknowledge them. We want to make sure that we know that they exist. So we're going to go ahead and put a ghost down. Remember, a ghost strum is when we miss the strings intentionally. So we're going to put a ghost down into our count and then strum the strings on the and of each beat. It looks like this. One, and, ready, go. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. Now let's put our two strums together so that we combine the down strum with the up strum into each singular beat. So when we link them up, we want that nice, steady, smooth motion not trying to rush through one to get to the next one. So each one has the same pace, the same rhythm to it. One and. Down, up. Down, up. And so if we put that on our four counts, we're going to look at it like this. One and. Ready, go. One and. Two and. Three This steady strum of down up is a great return point and something to always come back to if you find that you're starting to lose that time with the clock that we're trying to build into your strumming arm. So when you feel like you're losing the beat, come back to this. Down, up, down, up. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. So now let's spice things up a little bit. Instead of having a steady beat of down and ups, we're actually gonna do our first two beats. We're gonna use ghost ups. And then our last two beats, we're gonna put an up strum on the and of three and the and of four. So for our rhythm, we're gonna have a one, ghost, two, and, three, and, four, and. Down, ghost, down, ghost, down, up, down, up. Here we go. One and ready go one and two and three and four and excellent let's do that one more time one and ready go one and two and three and four and so enjoy your new upstrum and be sure to come back next week as we get into how to read these strumming patterns on the page and I'll send you home with a worksheet full of strumming patterns for you to practice on your own time. Happy strumming.